as a character. Yeah. So it, it's it's nice to see that he's taken from what was considered to be a very weak character into where he is now. There would be a very relatively strong character, and it's because of those changes that he's had uh, to him. And Soul Attack, I also feel like, was a very good boon for him to have. Now he can aggressively apply his Soul Charge, which mm -hmm. he, after some buffs to it, it was a really good Soul Charge, yeah. but the issue was that Soul Charge always docked his opponents away from them, so he was not really able to keep up the pressure the same. With the addition of Soul Attack, he could now keep up that aggression, he can keep up that pressure, and without having to reset neutral situations, he can be in an advantageous position and be in his powered up state, which he is, you know, an extremely good character when he's in Soul Charge. It's Definitely one of the a, better Soul Charges, yeah. yeah. He seems like he was designed around yeah. Soul Charge being one of the newest char being one of the two new additions to the game, which both of them seem to be heavily revolving around their Soul Charges. Yeah, I mean, when Grove first came out, or at least during like the beta uh, portion of the release, I thought it was really funny how um, my initial strategy was just to incorporate the two new mechanics of the game, which was to constantly use Reversal Edge in order to gain meter, and then just spend that meter immediately off of Soul Charge activations. And uh, it's gotten, the, the overall meta has gotten a little bit more complex, but yes. uh, it's still overall at its core the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, now, we didn't really talk all that much about Talon, but with the introduction of something like, uh, I believe it's 6K, the tech crouching I-12, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, I'm curious to see, I can't tell if the buttons are, okay, it looks like they are correct. Um, whoa, Talon not looking the right way. That's yeah, bad news. Oz just didn't do anything for a while. I mean, yeah. I was just trying to make it so that he would get some of the life from that first game. I'm not 100% on that one, but it looks like they're playing it out still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Oz looking a little bit uh, bewildered overall, not punishing that 6k, which, don't get me wrong, it's incredibly hard to do, but without it, it's one of those moves that has a significantly lower amount of blocks done than you would expect, and if you didn't actually research it, you would think that it's safe. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there's a chance that he may not necessarily know about it, but uh, Tom already in the yellow as well, but he does take up that first round. Yeah, that addition to hers is a, a fantastic move that she now has. Avenger A. Yeah. Tech Crouches on Tech Crouches. Two two eight close GI interesting choice. Maybe trying to bait a GI, but by the wind can and doing so much damage. <laughs> Oz sprinting full screen, try and get uh, over there. Sly Tiger using a tech crush to beat out a mid, not so much. Mm -hmm. Not throw, not gonna kill. Went for looks like a low there, but Soul Charge gonna be knocking that away. Trying to go for some teleport stuff and gets the hit, oh. but unfortunately doesn't get the combo. And then there's that fast kick attack you were talking about before, Jay. It was like that weird, like, off-axis kind of thing. So yeah. it forced Oz to effectively whiff, then he tried to sidestep, but he was at too much of a frame disadvantage. So, you know, not not sure what was up with that. Uh, just a little bit of spaghetti going on. But it looks like Oz is uh, picking it up yet again. He has Soul Charge coming in from Sly Tiger, trying to negate that advantageous position that Oz has. Oh, Ooh. wow, so smart. That was Reversal Edge safe. And ended up getting hit by the gigantic wall combo, getting gonged as well. Oh, but that's gonna not do it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I say, buddy. Yeah, you like that bait? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A on whiff into 2A. Oz potentially getting frustrated at the amount of uh, reversal edge. Welcome to Talon. Yep. He's trying to you know, call out those reversal edges and everything with uh, that horizontal attack, but it has not been working out for him at all. Man, 2-2-A, right. very interesting choice. It does seem to be paying dividends, but yeah. really one of the main things that absolutely killed Oz in that first round was attempting to go for these GIs as like a timing kind of thing yeah. when Sly Tiger was able to delay it just enough, and obviously with the further delay, was able to provide even heavier amount of damage punishment. Uh, yeah. So, man, Sly was able to win the entire round off of like three or four reads. Yeah, it definitely was. But Oz, you know, trying to not let that get to him, going into game number two, trying to make a change happen here. Uh, it looks like it's still a little bit more of the same story. Oz being very active with uh, what he decides to punish with, or like the kinds of reads that he's trying to make within Sly Tiger's mix-ups, and uh, being wrong on some of the stuff is pretty risky, as you can tell. Yeah, and he tried to move away, but then that 6K is so fast, at 12 frames, can't be trying to backstep that one. And really, the only problem with it is that it's unsafe, right? But yeah. if uh, the opponent isn't punishing it, you should feel totally okay with just doing it over and over again with it, you know. No problems. Today's okay. okay. He gets the lead on 6A plus B into the combo. Soul Charge though coming in from Sly Tiger. Good meter usage. We're just negating that advantageous position again. 
Infinite highs. It looks like he uh, ducked into a taunt. A ballsy move. We'll see if it pans out. Mm -hmm. Kate gets the hit in the string Soul Charge extension. Ooh, one for the six. Kate doesn't get it, but still able to capitalize. Sly Tiger looking very, very strong right now, trying to take this two games straight. I almost kind of wish that uh, Oz had gone for a, uh, a Soul Charge in that situation because it was really. Sly Tiger was dead to like just one, one and a half good reads, mm -hmm. and uh, he would have been a okay. Going for that 2 2 A again, again, paying gigantic dividends going into the Black Gambit. He's got Oki. Okay. He does. Ooh, block the not out of this one yet, getting the counter hit. Sly Tiger trying to make a comeback happen. Only living on a pixel can't afford to guess wrong. That's that. Yeah. Yep. Tries to go for the string mix, but Oz has the patience, knows he can just be patient in that situation and take the advantage afterwards. He's got the meter advantage, but that never really means all that much against uh, Talon. And I also kind of wish this Wall Rising punishment was a little bit better. Kind of looking like Season 1 Grow Punishment with like Wall Rising K and stuff. And that's mm -hmm. uh, not good. You've got stuff like Lightning Slash and Black Gambit and all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Really need to make something happen here. I think yeah. he teleported out of the way. I lied. Oh, no, we didn't. And Sly Tiger going to be taking it, I think. That counter hit yeah, should be doing uh, more than enough. Yeah. Yes, it is. Sly Tiger 2 0. Oh. I. No, we didn't talk about it. We were mostly talking about what Oz was doing, but I liked this Sly Tiger from what I saw. Uh, I talked before uh, a lot when I watched Sly Tiger play about how he kind of just loops into like a flow chart sometimes on his set offense. Play kind of stuff, like yeah. a set play kind of uh, approach to the game. And not Tolum can do that, right, with her offense, but I noticed that he wasn't doing that as much. He was going for different options throughout the rounds, and I liked this kind of new Sly Tiger that we're seeing, right? getting those adaptations, because that's been a problem of his, where he can make it into top 16s, and he can be in top 8, but when he hits that like that next level of player, that kind of um, like flow chart -y kind of offense doesn't really work out for him at all, so yeah. I like that Sly Tiger is trying to get better and working on that. That's definitely something that I noticed, and good stuff to him. Yeah, overall, I find Sly Tiger to be um, somebody who can play in a very as you were talking about an uninteractive kind of fashion yeah. where it's effectively i have this to bring to the table and if you can beat it that's good for you and if you can't then i win and that's yeah. basically all it is but then once you start dealing with well some of the other people that we're going to be seeing in this tournament um that kind of stuff doesn't really fly uh, yeah. especially once we get to like top eight when it becomes uh, best three out of five the longer a set goes on the further uh, value adaptation has um, and then suddenly you can kind of pull all of that apart. And if there is no change to what happens, then you don't really have anything going. Uh, something that I always talk about is, um, you know, I say in some of my other streams or other like post-match analysis or in commentary and stuff is the moves that are being used, for instance, when Sly Tiger does go into set play or any other person goes into set play, the yeah. moves that are being used are good in yes. and of themselves. That, 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 I'm not saying that they're bad, but any move is bad if the opponent knows that it's happening, right? Exactly. Uh, it, it's all about predictability slash unpredictability. It's the yeah. strongest skill that somebody can have and the weakest weakness. Exactly. And I think that was the problem that Sly Tiger had for a long time, right? Is he would go for those kind of set play situations or like this would be his option. Like this was his approach tool. Whenever he needed to approach, this is how he would do it. Yeah. Uh, so when his opponents caught on to it and they adapted, I felt like he used to struggle with that quite a lot but the, this sly tiger you know coming into these events he's been pra practicing a lot um even i, I dm'd him a couple times about it as well and i've noticed right. the improvement so i'm really happy to see that out of him and i'm excited to see how far he's able to make it into this tournament because he is a player that has been getting better as he's been entering these events well as far as i know that means that he's gotten top eight and if we hit that Macharino goal i think all of top eight gets paid out at least to a certain extent so mm -hmm. I feel confident that's going to happen. So in which case, I'm going to preemptively say, hey, Sly Tiger, congratulations. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. pretty solid stuff. Mm -hmm. And remember, guys, if you want to help this event, all of the proceeds are going to be going to be put into making sure this event is covered in terms of it is uh, being paid for for the, the server, uh, the players getting it. And I think the commentators get a little oh, yeah. bit as, as well for it, which is fantastic. It's all going in. All of your support means so much. And that is absolutely fantastic we're at sixteen hundred and eleven dollars and sixty nine cents yep and right at two thousand dollars team shadow texas is going to be adding in another five hundred dollars into the pot yep just right there oh nice awesome see on the top i just got paid for an event casa casa friday is 53. Nice. That's, why, that's why matrino is so godlike you know it's told you everybody's info it's pretty immediate so you know 
Make sure you work with your TOs to get the information so you can get paid out. Um, anyway, $2,000. Top 8 payout and an extra $500, like Zubaz said. And $3,000, same deal. Yeah. It's awesome that you guys are being able to support us yeah. in the ways that you do. So Caliber 6, uh, for its entire inception, has always been supported so well by the community. And when we were you know, first coming onto the scene, uh, some of the events had us, they were showing us off, and as the hype kind of started to dwindle down, people thought, like, okay, that's, I guess that's kind of it for Soul Calibur. But the support was there every single week that places kept keeping us around. Like, NLBC kept us on stream because the support for Soul Calibur was there. And that's all because of you guys at home. Right? Yeah, so thank sure. you guys all so much for that support. This community, you know, we may not be the largest in terms of viewers, but in terms of the support that we have, fine, it yeah. shows it's overwhelming. how much we're there. Yeah, yep. like we're, we're always there behind every event. So yep. You guys are absolutely fantastic. Also, guys, uh, make sure uh, check out the marketplace if you want an item. These hoodies, if you're interested, 100% of the proceeds go to the prize pool. So $35 goes to the prize pool for any of these hoodies. Check out the uh, Twitch quest, Twitter quest, YouTube quest, click quests. All the codes are used up, guys. So click these free options to donate. Every little penny counts. These all free options to donate to the tournament. Twitter quest, YouTube quest, click quest. Thank you, guys. And thank you to everybody that's donated so far. Go through the last list of contributions. One must fail 20. And happy call it 20. That was the last one. That was about an hour ago. Um, yeah, so if you can... Hit those sponsor quests, guys, at the very least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sponsor quests, they go a long way. And this. they don't take that much time. And we saw, you know, you see Sly Tiger doing them all up right there, adding a whole bunch of extra little bit of money to the match arena. A little bit goes a long way. So it looks like we're going with Omega XCN versus Zephukai. Two people who have been in the community for collectively probably longer than other competitors have been alive. I think them collectively has probably more than uh, like I've been alive. <laughs> yeah, Zefukai uh, has been around for just as long as I have back in Soul Calibur 4. Omega XCN even before that. Yeah. I can't remember the last time that I actually saw them play against each other, but uh, I'm sure it's happened quite a few times. Uh, but actually, now that I think about it, they did play against each other in the Boom League not that long ago. Zephukai ended up taking that, but that being said, that's just traditional online. This is Parsec, so who knows what can end up happening. Exactly. Ooh. Okay, speaking of happening, getting that A6 lethal hit on the side turn, Omega XCN is very consistent with that. Playing it pretty slowly. I like the fact that he's in, in within the first round, challenging with A6 into the stance just to see what Zeph's option is going to be. It looks like it's going to be 2A. I don't know if it covers everything, but Omega XCN knows. So we'll see uh, what he ends up deciding to do. Yeah. He gets the rough grab, but Zeph guy is so good at attacking those throws, but he doesn't duck under the 4BA. Yeah, he also, uh, Omega XCN also didn't punish the 60A on block, so a little bit of warming up to do for both players, it seems. Yeah. Nice block. Gets the punish. Mm hmm. High and damage punish on the I 12. Yep. Lots of guard damage there. He could try to whittle him away with uh, chip damage. I appreciate the fact that Omega XCN is, uh, is deciding to stay away for as long as possible. Yeah, it has life leads. It doesn't really need to commit to anything super high risk. He can kind of just take these nice situations, getting the chip damage as well with the secondary sword that Taki has. God, already in yellow life too. Just it, it's it's such a whittling down of all resources, and he's got double bar. So I hope that he finds a way to use it pretty quickly. Yeah, nice stuff. Yep, getting that into the frame advantage situation. Is Zephyrkai now in control of the match? He is setting the pace. And there's the duck, but no, oh, the sidestep. He wasn't quite in time on the whip punish. Omega XCN just like bouncing all over the place. Difficult to remember what the options are with all the strings. It seems like the second that a potential ring out slash positive stage positioning opened up, Omega XCN just decided to go crazy. He's continuing to go crazy. How did he sidestep that horizontal? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Goes into soul attack and angel step A plus B. Gonna go with the mid option. Curing around no Zephyrkai up two rounds to one. But Omega the XCN, two bars of meter. Problem is that he's had those two bars ever since the previous round. So he ended up losing a bar due to the fact that he didn't get his bonus bar for being down two rounds. Uh, and it looks like we're already over. Man, Omega XCN is just not playing the video game right now. I really wish that he would use his. There we go. Yeah, there it is. He can get a lot of chip damage and a lot of pressure. Ooh, wow, that was almost a really awesome duck into a CE, but it was simply too slow. Yeah. Whoa, okay. 
a little bit of spaghetti going on right now. Alright, Soul Tori's definitely only needs one more hit, and that 6 XP delayed it ever so slightly, and getting the hit. He had whittled Omega XEN down a lot with lows, like going for that 1k quite yeah. a lot. And you saw it at the end there, in a situation where he kind of just had to guess between two of them. The same situation where Zephyr Kai had been conditioning him. We were walking around, sidestepping, going with a low. He went for the mid that time, and secured game or one. Overall, I just feel like Omega XEN's lack of meter usage, and... Uh, freezing up once those pokes started becoming a little bit more instilled really kind of killed it. I really wish that he had used some of his uh, resources to his advantage a lot sooner, rather than just using it for like a panicky kind of thing. Yeah, the very getting the lethal hit 14, not able to get the max damage combo, but still looking strong. A lot of challenges with the 66A. I guess he's using it for like, for one, it's, it acts as a tech crouch, and for two, it acts as a way to get away from Taki's uh, stance sidestep. Uh, yes. that you can end up doing as well. So, you know, definitely makes a lot of sense. But uh, it's important for Omega XN to remember that it is punishable. So you could potentially get some pretty good stuff out of it if he starts reading it. Definitely yep, can. Going with the 6 6 A plus B is a lot. Getting that ship damage <laughs> in and gets the counter the A plus B. Zephyr Kai just a little late on his option. Yeah, it looks like he, he just challenged in a place where had Omega XN gone for any other option in that stance situation, he would have won. But uh, yeah. it didn't pan out so much. Chasing it down. Yeah, it goes to the 3B. That was stalker. To be the sure. Yeah, definitely. Except the first one with uh, the bar. I don't know if he's going to use it all that quickly. Fantastic punishment. Even further punishment. 6 6 eight again. Okay, it's clear what Zeph's uh, matchup knowledge has decided to tell him with regards to how to beat Taki. It's a real shame that grab didn't work out. 2 2B is a very good move. Yeah, tech crouching very, very well. Goes to Soul Attack, finally spending his bar. <laughs> The whole whiff into let's do it again. Oh wow. He could potentially get that guard crush. He doesn't get anything out of the clash. Oh, that kills him. Wow. I don't yeah. think either of them were expecting that clash. And Omega no. XN, I think he could have gotten like an A6 or something, and it just it didn't pan out. Not punishing those 6 6 A's. That's a real big deal too. It is. Go oh, getting oh, the no. A plus B lethal hit. Zephyr that's Kai. Just... Wow. Man. Still in guard gauge trouble. But it, it looks like it, Zeph is perfectly willing to take guesses that are proactive in every stance situation that Omega XEN is putting him in. And yes. this is a solid way. He ends up taking that next round. And it's a real solid way of dealing with characters that do a small amount of damage over and over again, where you just constantly wheel through your options. Because if you're correct once out of every two or three times that you're wrong, you're still going to win out the day. Yeah. Definitely, and that's kind of like the game he's playing, as you mentioned before, where Zephyr Kai is kind of just okay with waiting for his opportunity, sneaking in things like 2-2-B in there to just disrupt the offense that Omega XN is going for with all these strings. Oh, wait, Zeph just got, like, a third life with, like, 2K and 2A. Yeah, he does that. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Yeah. Same. I mean, I enjoy watching it. I hate playing against it, but still. Yeah. Omega oh, yeah. XN with double bar. I wish he would do a thing with it, because every moment that you have double bar means you're not building any additional meter. Wow, that's still caught. Keeping his frame advantage up, as Zephyr Kai just chilling and out, blocking, waiting for his opportunity, but unfortunately gets run countered, giving Omega XEN the full counter hit combo and able to secure the round. Once again, full. No, I think that's too slow. Yeah. yeah. One of the slowest nice CEs in the game. I mean, it has a vulnerability frame, so it's great for, like, effectively creating quote unquote whiff punishes, but not like actual whiff punishes, if you get mm. my saying. Like using the invulnerability frames to make it a whiff rather than yeah. uh an actual whiff punishment like 66 A. Yeah. Definitely. I really feel like that CE just kinda of killed everything for Mega XCN. I might be wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, Popping more meter. <laughs> definitely not out of this one yet. Taki, nice. super strong character when she is in Soul Charge power duck can make a huge comeback happen, but Zephyr Kai being super patient and taking it 2-0. Yeah, overall, Omega XN just not crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's, you know? The 66A, the lack of 66A whiff punishment. Honestly, you change just that one thing, and there's a very good chance that that entire set goes radically different. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, with how it played out, Zephyr Kai was, as you mentioned before, very confident and just kind of waiting for his opportunity to make an offensive decision. Uh, mm -hmm. With things like you know crouching under the throws, like he got that lethal hit in the in the one round, sneaking in the two two Bs, uh, waiting for a moment to arise to go with offensive pressure. Right, he was okay with kind of taking a bit of chip damage, and Omega XEN kept applying it. Right, sure he was getting some ch chip damages uh, in there, a little bit of hits here and there, but nothing super substantial. Right, right. 
And, and then when Zeph was finally was able to get an opportunity, then he was able to open up and go into more things. Like you get the Oki pressure situations and he kind of, when he had the opportunity to force his game onto Omega XCN, as you mentioned, he got like a third of his life with just like 1K. Right. So that is a, a great, great play from Zephyr Kai. Yeah, the tech crouches from both 22B and 66A were really kind of the tail of the tape there. Yep. Um, they're definitely important tools to kind of use against a character that relies on so many highs and so many buttons to try and do any kind of like pressure game. Um, I really feel like Omega XCN really needed to come up with a version of the pressure that would allow him just enough hang time to potentially see when Zeph is going for something like that and then punish accordingly. It's not yeah. all that much different from somebody who, for instance, is uh, using GIs and using reverse ledges to get out of a lot of situations. Yeah. Now, Taki doesn't really have to worry about having the stance pressure get hit by reversal edge because you have the ability to sidestep into the unblockable in a lot of yeah. situations, so you can just react to those sorts of things. But it's very similar to when you're just effectively in neutral, doing a lot of small pokes and having somebody trying to GI to get out of there. So you kind of have to thread the needle and provide them just enough slack to make them think that that's a good idea. And yeah. then you can start putting in something that's even heavier. So in Taki's situation, it would be like a 3B or probably the best A plus B in the game. Uh, yeah. That's you know almost assuredly uh, the, the way the bomb is in, the, in this game. So yeah. definitely another solid option that you can go with. It's tricky by all means we're talking about a very abstract concept of just making significant reads to see where those 66a's and 22b's are coming from yeah um so easier said than done but uh this is deus ex kylo 2 man you got to do complicated stuff exactly and zifkai is just so good at placing those things where it feels like every time he does them they just hit anyway but we're going into the next thing we got huang on the screen <laughs> with boom versus lolo rocking the astaroth did they know which characters they were going to play before they started because both of these guys no never mind i was about to say both of these guys were playing yoshi before but boom has been playing huang the whole time now lolo has a huang as well we haven't seen it so far this tournament but he has a huang and so i'm curious to know if he feels like astaroth is particularly good against huang and why i can't i couldn't tell you why that would be perhaps they blind picked or maybe they blind picked i don't know Weird choice to go with Astroth, though. I always love watching Lolo's Astroth. Oh, one of the only people I know to actually know that 6AA on block is a high high that doesn't jail. So, getting away from that pressure string that was guaranteed against every other character. Now, 6AA does have a variation where you can go for a mid instead, but the meta with Huang is brand new, just as the character. There it is! There's that mid that I was talking about. So I'm curious to see if that ends up being a thing that he has to worry about. Continuing to beat out the 6k, getting yeah. fantastic amounts of damage. Devastation stance. That's the anti-meter one. So he now Lolo's gonna have to be precarious about soul charges. He is in boom, you know, he's he always advocates staying at positive karma with Huang. A lot of people like to go into the like the negative like the super negative negative nine stuff, but he is not about it. He says positivity is the way. He's very good at riding that line of a small amount of negative and to the point of like neutral. Yeah. Um, is that a ring out? Is he dead? No, he's not. not. That was supposed to be a beast. Like, ooh, he, taught, he caught him out of meter, though. That was a pretty big deal. Throwing a ton of minus 12 things, and uh, none of them are getting... Oh, that's dead. No, you're not. I lied. Mm -hmm. He has to potentially be worried about Boom spending bar. You know that Boom wants to spend bar so he can get his yeah. talisman back. Yeah, he wants that CE kill, but oh. unfortunately doesn't get it. just gets it with looks like a single B or something. Yeah, but... I think it was B. Equal uh, meter, yeah. a significant amount of life loss, but still manageable. It starts getting much more serious as time goes on. Yeah. Long media attacks, so huge. Mm -hmm. 66B is such a great force blocking situation. That's death. <laughs> yes, it is, and he was he kind of was just okay with spending those talismans in that round because he he got a couple hits early on, and he felt like he, maybe if he just spends those resources, he can make the comeback in the round have or not the comeback but make it worthwhile that he's spending the resources that will if he loses the round uh, come back to haunt them but it doesn't matter if you win it i appreciate the fact that lolo 
hard slammed character select. Yeah. Um, I would imagine that Yoshimitsu does very well in the Huang matchup. I feel like Yoshimitsu has the ability to overwhelm uh, a mid-range character like Huang pretty easily. Both characters are not really characters that get a lot of frame advantage when they hit with small stuff. Yeah. And so in that case, an i 10 is going to be better than an i 12 right? Yeah, definitely. Yoshimitsu with that i 10 aa And if he gets the counter hit as well, you can spend the meter on the Brave Edge and get the combo confirmed there. So Yoshimitsu has high burst damage potential as well. Uh, not oh, Ring up possibilities as well on this stage. Mm -hmm. Yoshimitsu is an absolute demon at getting ring outs, and especially reverse ring outs. He's incredibly good at them. Yeah, uh, Huang has some pretty solid uh, reverse ring outs as well, but I don't think anybody, especially now that Zas's reverse ring outs have been nerfed, I don't think any character can really match in terms of ring out capability, both forward and reverse and side and whatever kind of access you have. Uh, like Yoshimitsu does. Wow, immediate yeah. wake up 2A. It looks like Boom is immediately going to take a very buttonsy approach to this. Immediate devastation as well. Mm -hmm. One thing that Huang does kind of have going for him is his... You know, he does have solid range options that yeah. people don't really think about, so that could be an option for him to go for as well. Immediately... Okay, yeah. He ends up eating the jump kick, but he doesn't have to eat the wall combo, so he's probably happy about that. Doesn't guess right on the mix. Another jump kick. Oh, the GI just didn't work. Don't you hate it? when yeah. you're 100% correct about a poke coming out at that time, but they had spaced it poorly enough to where they don't get punished. It's yeah, like you you outplayed your opponent times two, but you end up getting killed for it. Yep. I hate that. Already at minus one. Jump kick, only highs. Yep. Ooh, nice spacing using that great movement that Huang has to avoid the Dragonfly K. Or sorry, the uh, Med K. Okay, so... Now he's in Soul Charge, which means that uh, Huang does have an additional lethal hit. It might not matter. Not punishing the I-12. I didn't talk about it when he was playing Astaroth, but yeah, that, that 4kb is minus 12. Yoshimitsu can do quite a lot with that. And definitely can. Tying it up one-to-one, -one, one round apiece right now. Boy. Trying to make this happen. Trying to close this out. Yeah, how are you going to deal with Yoshimitsu just going into meditation? I guess you have I'll seal you. Yeah, we saw him before as well, going for the back step, so that could be another option as well, but Lolo trying to make this happen, wants to take this round, going in, ducking on the train, gets the wall as okay, has the wall pressure right now. So really impressive that he's dealing with this six hit. You can tell that Boom is just so unused to dealing with somebody who has that kind of anti-Huang anti uh, at this point, but also Lolo not really respecting a lot of the force blocks. It looks like neither of them are really respecting force blocks. 3B, 3B. Oh, that's wow. it. Wow, oh, speaking of 3B. He gets all of his talismans back, too. So yep. he's, he's going to be at one positive where he could have been down two rounds to one and pretty intensely negative as well. So that is a huge boon for Boom. Say that three times fast. Uh, no thanks. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, you're mine. Yeah, you got to worry about that back turn B plus K. Is that out? It, no, he, it's, it's not out. Okay. okay. Decided to go for the mix-up instead. He probably knows much better than I do whether it's a ring out or not. Mm -hmm. yeah, boom, definitely the first foremost like expert on Huang. Yeah. Oh, I'm surprised that wasn't a splat. He just ended up getting pushed away. Mm -hmm. He blocked that, by the way. Well, we're still looking a little bit lost as of what he can do. Boom, just constantly pressing so many more buttons than I think Lola was expecting. Now he's in soul charge. He is in his soul charge, just taking down, not getting too much out of it, but he waits patiently, sidestep into the wall rising, and he gets the combo. Oh, <laughs> beats the full crash 3k. Mm -hmm. And he the jump k. The okay. Yeah. Avoiding the puddle, avoids throw. Doesn't have a bar, he'll get it soon. Boom, almost at full meter. He has to make sure that it doesn't get stolen, though. Another jump kick, Lolo fantastic with these jump kicks right now. Lolo trying to get that rush down going. And great space control though with the horizontals coming in from Boom. Has a great situation here. He doesn't guess right on the mix up. One hit away and Boom oh, gets wow. him with the string. That's one thing we didn't really talk about. Yeah, we didn't talk about um, Huang. Like one of his boons is that he has a lot of strings. So they can be very hard to deal with. Because he can just mix them up, right? And you said, there you go. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 So he took advantage of his opponent not knowing the situation in terms of 
having that string. And it also works out if your opponent is aware of the string, you can just not do it and then go for another option, like a grab or something. Yeah, mental frame advantage at that point. But uh, yeah. I gotta say, when I first saw that Boom was gonna go Huang, I was like, this is gonna be tough because Lolo knows a lot about the matchup. He knew about the 6AA, he had a fantastic reaction to that. But to be perfectly frank, everything else was like not that great in terms yeah. of his reactions for Huang. He wasn't punishing minus 12 stuff. I didn't mention it before because he was playing Astro, so minus 12 punishment is really not that important. But for Yoshimitsu, it's a pretty important thing. He was also yeah. disrespecting all of the force block situations with things like 6-6-B. Uh, so, you know, Boom, uh, congrats to, to Boom for beating somebody who does have a uh, pretty solid anti-Huang, at least as the current meta goes, uh, pretty solidly. So really yeah. good stuff. Yeah, and bringing out this new character as well. I consider it to be a character that some people don't give too much credit to in terms of just his capabilities as a character. He has some things that make him fantastic, but he has the drawbacks of if you spend too many talismans and you now not only lost the round, but you're possibly at a significant life disadvantage. But Boom, I think, does a great job at managing that. Uh, and keeping himself, as you mentioned before, kind of balanced to where he's either like only slightly negative or he maintains positive by trying to close out rounds with his critical edge. Because as you mentioned before, he does gain talismans, positive uh, talismans back for killing with critical edge. Yeah, three, in fact, coupled yeah. with the fact that you're getting two in between rounds. That's a positive five. That's a pretty that's a pretty big swing. Uh, uh, he's also the only Huang player I can think of that has truly been realizing how crazy Huang's sidestep is. His backstep is okay. It's good. His, his sidestep is... I didn't think there could be a sidestep better than Sung Mina. I didn't think it was possible for somebody yeah. to... Uh, shades of uh, Soul Calibur Four Hilda. I don't yeah. know if anybody's going to get that reference, but hey. Uh, t he has the ability to get out of... So, for instance, we saw earlier Florida Man using the... Uh, the unblockable that Halmaru has uh, to try and catch people sidestepping. Uh, and it catches people all the time, right? Juan can actually sidestep that without yeah. any problems. Juan can also <laughs> so, sidestep yeah. things like Zhang Wa 2 2 b and yeah. also certain force block situations which no other character can sidestep. Yeah. Juan can uh, sidestep. So it's Just a, merely uh, having a sidestep is, un is significantly more counterplay to a lot of yeah. spots that other characters don't have. And so... Yeah. And Boom also has a lot of weird timing with like a lot of buttons -y. Because again, one of the major weaknesses that Huang has is that he doesn't really get plus frames on any of his small hits. So you're constantly guessing. And to be honest, I think that that really shows why there's been such a transference of Yoshi players to becoming Huang players. They're very yeah. similar in that way. Lots of buttons, lots of options, lots of you got to think really quickly and not really all that much with regards to a frame event. So Geo has been playing a lot of Huang, you know, yeah. Yoshi player going to Lolo has been playing a lot of Yoshi, has been doing a lot of Huang. So it, it, yeah. it seems to be, um, you know, a common thread, so to speak. Yeah, and I remember talking with uh, Geo about that. And he's like, yeah, you know, kind of, it, it's kind of what you mentioned where he, he kind of felt that way with the character and they kind of transferred for him pretty well. And it, it's kind of just funny how that that worked out where yeah. this one character group also plays this other character. Which is also kind of funny because, um, as Boom has said before, uh, just last night, Yoshimitsu is the best character in the game. Yeah. He and says that now a lot. they're Yeah, he says things a lot. You know, sometimes they're believable. Most times <laughs> they could be something else. But you know, hey. Uh, looks like now we're getting into the last match that we have in the winner's portion of it. It's going to be Florida Man and Noo. I don't remember who Noo has played against, but if I remember correctly, Florida Man ended up beating Incendiate to get into the winners of Top 16, yes. which is uh, no small feat. Definitely not rocking with the Hamaru. Going against Noo, still holding it down with Amina. Long range character versus long range character, sidestep versus backstep. Yep. Can't remember the last time I saw these two play against each other. Different coasts. Yeah, definitely. So you really realistic when we see it in these Parsec events, so yeah. it's amazing that we have these opportunities to bring these players together. Immediately going for uh, the uppercut option out of the, uh, the B plus K, effectively like recoil stance. Yeah, great Curious to see. There it is. Yeah, 4, <laughs> I was four K. Say. Yeah, and four the Warriors four focus mix up. You know, it's not really a huge life advantage to either player right now, but the rage with the double shoulder charge coming in for Hamaru. Florida Man taking round number one. He almost, Florida Man almost convinced me that uh, he had whip punished 
Sung Min is 4-4-B, which I was under the impression was completely impossible. It turns out I was right, because that was actually a counter hit. You can tell that it's such an impossible thing to whiff punish because Noo 100% whiffed at point-blank range and continued to press buttons. Yeah, it's minus 18 on a whiff. <laughs> cool beans. Mm -hmm. Cool beans, Soul Calibur 6. Alright, Soul Charge versus Soul Charge. Wow, the Earthquake Slash. Gonna be getting him on the counter hit, trying to apply the pressure still. Nice, though, being very patient right now is Florida Man. Not trying to take any risk. The 4 4k over, and the heavy slash gonna be slow enough to go past the GI and take round number two. Fantastic pressure. That, that was really great. Just awkward enough to deal with um, some of these slow. Both characters are not really all that fast, right? And yeah. so they have to be awkward within their pressure in order to really get anything going. Though that's not entirely the case when both characters are slow. They're just used to doing that, right? Yeah. So I, I'm curious to see how like this is going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, Florida Man is forced to play really awkwardly with a, you know, a significantly newer character, and he seems to be absolutely dominating this match so far. Noah has to get it together. It is only a couple hits away. Hotmaru can easily chunk that down, but Noah, try and not let that happen. Potentially just one mix-up situation what? away, but now either player can die at any moment, but the random counter hit 3B from Noah, keeping himself alive in game number one. So I gotta say, one of the other things with regards to slower characters that we just saw from Noo is uh, they're both pretty terrible with regards to block punishment. That's not yep. it because he doesn't have a CE, but I do appreciate just the raw 3B as like a way of keeping Florida Man from getting in. And honestly, Florida Man can start doing the same kinds of things too. Yep. This has been a gigantic swing within just a handful of seconds. I thought that Noo was gonna lose his first game for sure. Yeah, definitely, but the huge momentum shift, all he needs was that one round. Florida Man though, does have the meter advantage, but we haven't seen too much meter from either of these players. Yeah, not so much yet. They both uh, pressed Soul Charge at the same time last time. I wonder if the same thing is going to happen here. Or if uh, Florida Man's just going to... Yeah, okay. So they're both going to go with Meter, but this is frankly fine for Florida Man. He has another one coupled with Rage Explosion in the wings. Oh, yep. doesn't get his duck. Nice, though. Gets the block, but unfortunately doesn't get the right punish on that move. He can jump back extremely far there. It's super hard to punish. He's going to have to use Rage Explosion pretty soon here. Here yeah, it is. There it is. What are you going to do? You got a lot of stuff, but whipping isn't necessarily a feature. Oh, okay. I-14, horizontal mid, comes through, gets oh, him with the sleeper trap. You got to get up and block. Okay. A little bit ambitious from Florida Man, going with the Warriors Focus string that ends in a high when he was too far to even get Noah to start blocking it. Uh, I feel like yeah. Florida Man was getting a little bit too, like, I have to finish this right here, right now. Because effectively, once you use the Esen CE, um, your ability to make any further additional comebacks is significantly weaker. You don't have the same kinds of tools once you actually blow that option. So, yeah. as long as he keeps it calm, he should be okay. Uh, I feel like the only thing that I've uh, that I've seen from Noo that has been a specific matchup kind of adaptation is realizing that Florida Man's not going to be able to punish a lot of stuff on block. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but that's true for both these players, as yeah. you mentioned before. So they can both take advantage of the fact that their block punishment going both ways is terrible. And Noel has been the only one to really do so, so far. He is the longer range character. But see, there you go. Uh, Florida Man realizes that his 6-6-A, which is minus 12, can effectively be a solid way of getting in, and you don't have to worry about any kind of punishment. Exactly. So it could be a potential thing. Wow, Ooh, fantastic beat. Yeah. Yeah, he like 1B canceled in order to get that side set. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that's an amazing side step that you mentioned earlier on. I'm getting the heavy slashes, but I'm trying to build up those legal hits. And that's not going to do it. The kick does very low damage. Yeah. No has a bar. He probably wants to save it. Oh, ooh, he almost got way too ambitious there. He's almost dead, too. Nice yep. with the unblockable cancel into 1K. Yeah, great mix up. You know, in that situation that we mentioned before, your opponent wants to move and they see that unblockable, so he just they goes to hit yeah. the cancel. Yep. Scary stuff. Still with one bar. Fantastic 3B whip punish. Guard damage. Yeah. No, trying to go for typically force block Oki situations that simply do not exist on uh, Haomaru's back stuff. No, it's just such a great back option that you can just get away from situations that very few characters can. <laughs> Again, he's, he's too far away there, my guy. It's not working out, but hey, mm -hmm. it sort of worked out. Spending meter uh, in order to solidify that next round. Florida Man with a slight meter lead. Yeah, it can make something happen with that and try and secure this round number three. This is a very pivotal round a lot of the times in terms of uh, the set. Whomever gets the bonus, bo uh, bonus bar first yeah. uh, can potentially be in a weaker position. Oh, wow. And that's it. 
Because that's going to be a ring out, yeah? No, no it's oh. not. What? Uh, what do you do? Alrighty then. Wow, what a bait from Noo. Dropping the combo so as to get a tech trap question mark. Okay, yeah. Florida Man with double bar, except now he's also getting lethal hitted. This looks to be like an actual lethal hit combo. So an interesting choice by Noo. He used to hit him with the same move three times in a row. Yeah, but I also appreciated the duck in the soul attack. Best soul attack in the game. Oh! It was like, a, I think that was a 1B cancel, which ended up getting sidestepped into B plus K, and it just didn't pan out. Is that it? No, no it's not, not it yet. Quite. One hit away, though. Or man needs to play perfectly here. Might have to spend Rage Explosion. Yeah, yeah, there it is. He decides to. He still has a lot of work. He's got an unbreakable grab, significantly more strings with significantly more chip damage, and of course the Eason, which unfortunately we're not going to see any of those things that I talked about. <laughs> Instead, we're just going to see him end up running into something. So, very solid from uh, from Noah so far. Um, yeah. Is that I, I agree. 2-0? That is 2-0 for every single match in winners. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah that, that first game looked heavily in favor of Florida Man. Yeah. But all it took, he didn't get one situation correct, and then Noah able to make the comeback happen, and then take it three rounds straight in that game number one on the reverse three rounds. So, Noah, good stuff to him. Going to be moving on, going to make winner side top eight. Just to give you guys an idea as to how the losers of top 16 has been going, legit, the new Siegfried player, he's ended up beating eight way funds. So he's continuing on in losers. Rakuto beating out TJ McBiggs. He's going up against Lolo. Uh, Thermidor ends up losing to Incendia. So Omega XCN versus Incendia. That match has happened quite a lot. Anders J ended up beating Zed. So Anders J versus Oz are some of the other matches that you're looking at in the losers. I can't really tell my favorites out of that. Lolo's pretty good. Incendiate, Enders. It could really be anybody, though. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's really tough to tell uh, how that's going to be. But congrats to Sly Tiger, Zeph, Boom, and Noo. You've made it to winners in top eight, unless I'm yeah. mistaken. And uh, you'll be playing tomorrow for uh, quite a bit of money, it seems. Yeah, definitely, guys. Remember, in everyone at home, if you use exclamation point match Reno in the chat, it'll take you to the Match Reno page where you can donate to this tournament directly. If we make it to $2,000, not only does all of Top 8 get paid out, but Team Shadow Texas will also be adding an additional $500 into the Match Reno pop bonus, which is going to be absolutely amazing uh, to make this event as best as it possibly can be for all these players and for everyone at home so thank you guys everyone so much for your support and if you want to also contribute without donating directly you can use all of the sponsor quests that we are seeing right now they only take a moment and it adds more money than you would think right you see you see them there i saw one for a dollar 30 cents 30 cents you do all of those and it makes up a lot more than it seems at face value when everyone starts doing them yeah, all of the hundreds of people who are watching the stream, who will probably be watching the stream tomorrow as well, if everybody does one of them, you'd be surprised how quickly that adds up. And I also want to mention that, uh, so again, if we hit two grand, Shadow Texas will be contributing another 500. There's an yeah. additional stretch goal once they get to three grand that they'll do it again. Yeah. But again, if we hit two grand, they put in 500, so that's 2,500. So you only need to make yet another 500, and there you go. Then you have yeah. an additional thousand. Yep. Also That's anybody, uh, yep. Also anybody that subscribes to the stream and supports this channel, I'll throw a one dollar to the match for you know, of your sub money as well. Yeah, that includes prime subs. Yep, resubs, whatever, gift subs or whatever. So, thank you for supporting me and this event, and you know, just the Soul Calibur community in general. You yeah. guys are awesome, and especially you know, Sabin Deuce, the uh, God. Thank you, uh, the yes. Happy Color, for donating a dollar. You know, uh, oh, and thank you, Combine, uh, the sub. Thanks so much for subscribing. Throwing that dollar, dollar bill, y'all, right now. Yeah, Happy Color, always supporting the Soul Calibur community as well, rocking it with SoulCaliburCreations.com. Uh, it's a fantastic website for people that are into just the creation aspect of Soul Calibur. It's a phenomenal place to uh, check out some awesome creations you've never thought of before and showcase your own. Yeah, shout outs to um, the major contribution uh, type people uh, who end up donating so quite a lot of money and quite a lot of time yeah. to uh, the Soul Calibur community. Uh, Beardly here. Graffiti Souls, Two Swords, a Nova Mage, obviously, with Shadow Texas. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm sure that I'm missing others, and my humblest of apologies. 
But uh, those kinds of people have really been keeping the Soul Calibur community growing and striving, yeah, if not thriving, yeah. uh, in a way Makes that so you wouldn't necessarily thriving. expect, considering how small the community can be at times. Yeah, it's a community that is small in terms of its uh, size and numbers, uh, but large in its but the heart. soul still burns. Yeah, the, the soul burns, right? Yeah. And hey, it's, hey uh, gang. phenomenal to be a part of. What's up? What's up, my dude? Hey, I, I, got, I just remembered... While I was listening to the great, great talking about the match, you know, you're doing, I remembered something else that I, I need to mention. Uh, so because especially since you mentioned uh, Happy Color, um, we have one more part of the pot. Uh, the first to the first place and second place uh, winners will get a custom creation from SoulCaliberCreations.com. Um, so that, look forward to that as part of the pot bonus donated graciously by uh, soulcalibercreations.com and the creators over there. Yeah, um, yeah. More information about that tomorrow during top eight. Just needed to shout it out today though. Um, yeah, yeah. And since I'm here, I will let you know that we have Ender's J and Oz coming up. Fantastic. I always love to see Ender's J on screen. He's one of my favorite players to watch uh, and we'll kind of talk about why, but uh, Quickly, I want to just mention uh, Happy Color again in just terms of like how awesome their creations are. They do things in the character creation that I didn't think were possible in terms of like things that they do with patterns and stickers that make granular it. detail with the yeah. different like, you know, like hex. Well, not necessarily hex editing, but just like something that you just really straight up would not expect. I've seen what it takes to create one of those creations at one time, yeah. and it looks like if I were to take the text version of it and put it into a computer, it would hack like a portion of my computer and like be in a, <laughs> like an exe file that would eventually like give tons of money to something it looks yeah. really crazy and intricately detailed yeah they're super awesome how much they stretch the limits of the character creation but going into the match enders j the reason why he's one of my favorite players to watch is he has a very simple game plan that it revolves entirely around for the most part grab and 3b yeah. and it's so effective that he's one of the best players in north america <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting thing where one of the things that we talked about before when we saw Oz playing before was that uh, his wall rising punishment didn't really seem all that great. So with regards to dealing with Enders' offense, how is he going to block and uh, block punish 3B from Servi? And how is he going to beat duck grabs? Because yeah. if he's not getting a lot of damage on those situations, it's going to be hard beams to try and beat out Enders' J. It's going to be difficult uh, to a significant extent. But he, ends up, he seems to be doing pretty fine right now. Mm -hmm. Whoa, hey! Chasing down after a grab break. Hey, nice though, ducks, blocks the low, gets the wall rising A into the knockdown situation. Ender's J not out of this one yet. He saw the duck there, so that's going to be information. Gets the 3B launch. Cervantes having the highest damage normal hit 3B in the game. Interesting. It looks like Oz is just kind of going for, like, uh, step ducks into wall rising stuff apropos of nothing. Like, he's using it as just part of his offense. To be honest, that seems pretty risky. Um, he's going for a lot of just instant wall rising B, which although it can be quick, can potentially get blown up pretty heavily as we just saw in that last round. Now, if you were to switch that to a wall rising A, I could see it a little bit more, but uh, it's pretty, pretty spooky stuff. Just the wall combo conversion, goes the two-way, tried to bait out the soul charge with the resist impact, but odds doesn't give it to him. That 3B ended up catching, like, enters his soul. Gonna be uh, the first person I've seen punish uh, the Avenger A plus B, and the super de duper long range CE is gonna solidify the second round. Great use of meter. Use your meter to close out rounds. That is a very good strategy. And Cervantes as well. Builds him gunshots towards his gunshot and lethal hit. When he hits nine of them, he gets a lethal hit on two of his moves. <laughs> Just immediately soul attack. Something tells me that Enders didn't want that reversal edge. Are we going to end this first round with one second on the clock? Oh, not just yet. Okay, Enders coming back. You don't need that many hits like that in order to come back with Cervantes. He has a bar of his own. He has the gunshot lethal hit as well if he wants to try and cash it in. Just one hit away and gets the run <laughs> counter with the 2A. Just keeps doing it. Whatever. 2A, wall rising K, 2A, 2A. <laughs> hey, it worked. But the yeah, gunshot yeah, yeah. is ready to go. Any sort of whiff like that yeah, yeah. right there is going to give him that lethal hit. It is a 6B hold. A huge damage combo. Decides not to spend the bar, but uh, you, you wouldn't think it would be that big of a deal much that you notice. Two meter to one. Ender is kind of being a little bit ambitious with his ability to try and poke out of these Avenger situations. He's getting like wall rising A. He's getting hit out of his CE as well, giving him the wall hit, but he's not expecting it. 
Oz with almost two bars, he may not even need it. Enders is going to have to spend some meter, and I think that gives him the round. So it's, it is. wow, that was really difficult for me to talk through the whole time. But I you think, did a great job, uh, buddy. Thanks very much. I, I, wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't fishing, but I like what I got. <laughs> but uh, it's a real shame that Oz decided to go on, like, the most... Uh, the, the riskiest option within his Avenger. He was on such a high with all of these correct Avenger guesses, but even if Enders had correctly guessed low on like an Avenger KA, something tells me Enders would not have been prepared to do a CE punish when there's a second hit uh, coming. Because, you know, Cervantes' CE is relatively slow. It's it's not exactly the fastest thing. It does, it's not like the activation has tech crouch properties. So he could potentially have to be worried about blocking the low and then getting up into it and potentially getting hit out of his CE, similar to what happened before. Oh, oh my god! Okay, okay, you get a hit. Stop. He just okay. walks up, 2A plus B lethal hits him, and says, that is the pace of the match okay. I have now set. All right, all right. Anders wants me to shut right the hell up. Mm -hmm. He decides... He's just hitting him out of these uh, Avenger B plus Ks. If he can do that on reaction, that's uh, spooky, scary skeletons for me. Giving the counter hit with the AA, trying to keep that frame advantage up. That's the second time he's been yeah. counter hit with, out of uh, a move with 6A plus B coming in. And what was a dominant round from Ender's J. Oz able to keep it come back in it. But we saw Ender's J totally keep little comebacks. Great IGDR with punch, but he drops the combo. This is... To be honest, I expect this kind of gameplay from Oz. This is typically how he plays. This mm -hmm. is, in my opinion, not really how Enders typically plays. No. Uh, it's interesting to see that both of them are going so wackadoo zany that uh, I'm having a tough time keeping up with, like, they're both trying to provide opportunities for, the, for them to just, like, hang themselves. Yeah. And it's sort of working, sort of not. Like, I can't tell if Oz is actually at a disadvantage here. It doesn't look like he is right now. No, He's dead for one more hit. Mm -hmm. Oh, he didn't pull the trigger no. on the spring. <laughs> oh, he goes to the block. He went for the Avenger A again after what happened before. Jesus Christ. The cojones on this man. He doesn't care. No fear. Ender's trying to like quintuple backdash to get away from Oz. He's simply too scary. He's like a. Imagine being so scary that a dead pirate is scared of you. Mm -hmm. But he goes to the run up grab. That's the Ender's J special. Goes from 3B trying to keep it simple. Gets the counter hit again, but Tex out of the situation. Block punish for Ender's J. One hit away, and he's going to get the trade in his favor. Ender's J not out of this game number two yet. Now that's the kind of gameplay that I expect from Ender's. Very small and compact and non committal. Uh, I guess he's just not used to trying making decisions to this degree this quickly. Constantly trying to press buttons to get away. Wow, he got hit by a two-way and then just did three B. I I don't I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what's happening? I don't know, but every time he the second time he got that counter hit on the two two AA and all his tech out of the three B. So maybe that can be information him to no, but this is gonna hurt so much. Oh, I I feel like he was supposed to be dead, but he ends up. Wait, is that no? It's still oh. comboed or it's still scaled like it was a combo. <gasps> Nice. You're insane. You're actually the greatest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. That was so sick. Man, to to block the 3A plus B, which in and of itself is unsafe, but would, but the punish wouldn't have killed Oz, to also then know that Oz was potentially going to GI in response after his unsafe move and provide him the opportunity for something like 3-3-B into CE, that is just wonderful. Knowing what your opponent is about and punishing them accordingly. It's not something you see even at the highest echelon all the time. <laughs> that, that was an really incredible play coming into this round here, but Oz not into this one yet. Two bars a meter, one bar a meter for Ender's J. Oz trying to make this happen, going in with the B plus K, run up and grab. Is this going to kill? Yep. It <laughs> is, and Oz tying it up one to one. Well, it's a shame that uh, Enders didn't win after that uh, incredible handful of reads that yeah. he ended up pulling out, uh, because I really felt like that was supposed to be my end statement as, like, here is the recap of the match, and it just didn't come to fruition that way. I wonder if Enders had ever thought about potentially changing the stage so he has more room to work with, but yeah. uh, I guess he just wants to get this going, get this over with. Yeah, you know, definitely. Just made a couple of mistakes, you can clean it up. And see, I feel like he's changed the pace of the match. His approach is slightly different than it was previously. He's going for those grabs again, but Oz is just pressing so many buttons. It's hard for him to just enforce that thing that I, I talked about with the grab 3B. Oz is just constantly hitting buttons. I guess this is kind of like, remember how I was getting really excited with the fact that like Oz hit him with a 2A and then Enders did a 3B in response? I feel like uh, it's it's a game plan where Oz is putting himself at a slight frame disadvantage and Enders just wants to... Whoa, whoa, um, 
Okay, so that was All like right. double whiff into okay. A A A A. What? One A slide B. Yeah, one A slide B. Shades of icy change. Mm -hmm. Two to A. Oh, there, there he goes. Gets catch. the tech trap on. Yeah, I knew he saw it. Yeah, that's a huge amount of damage. Ends up doing a one K post three B on block. Interesting choices. It always seems like Enersis can try and backdash away from things like 6AA and uh, 6A plus B, and a lot of times it's just not working out, so it really seems like the adaptation he's going for is, I wish I could backdash out of it, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be in the cards today, so I'm just going to block. And in 6A yeah. plus B's case, I'm just going to block an AA punish, when what I really want to do is just backdash an IGR punish. Yeah. Too exactly. He's tried to go for it a few times, but there he goes, because the back step into the side step into the IGR. <laughs> It's that unblockable, you gotta tech up for that. Tech to the side, that is. Ooh, he's trying to tech trap of his own. Doesn't work out. Oz potentially needs to spend meter here, but also, I don't really know what Oz is about, so I might be wrong. Yeah, I understand going into 3B. Gets block punish from my Oz. Good stuff for him. Going for the throw again. Trying to enforce that mix-up that he's so known for. Yeah, it looks like Oz is kind of getting drained of all of his momentum here. But here we go. Here's potentially the way it goes. Okay. He has to win here right now. Oh, into the stance. That's not safe. Oh, uh, yep. I really feel like he kind of gave up there for no reason. I still feel like he had the advantageous position. He didn't need to go balls to the wall there. But that being said, Oz tends to go balls to the wall any old time. So, I mean, hey, I, it was working for, for that long. So I, I can understand it. But um, it becomes significantly easier for somebody like Enders to realize that all he has to do is clamp down hard and just yeah. wait for the opponent to hang. Like, imagine Oz had just done like a grab. Just like, that's, that's what I was going to mention, a little bit Jay, grab, is like yeah. he had the position. He had, he'd been pressing so many buttons throughout the entire set that Enders had to change his game plan from being relatively grab heavy to just being more movement heavy statue blocking and going for block punishment he had conditioned his opponent to do that with all the buttons he was pressing and in that situation there he had the wall pressure enders couldn't move anywhere so he was just blocking and waiting for his opportunity which he blocked the three beads sidestep and got the punish if he had just gone for a grab to the that could have been a totally different story right that is the condition that he had built up with all of those buttons that he was pressing i really wish because I'm just imagining the last portion of the match in my mind. So he did 6BB into Avenger on block. That's unsafe, and there's two ways it, right? Yeah. Um, imagine right there, literally right then, right there. You know... Enders isn't going to go for a wall rising A, especially after everything that has happened. So yeah. if he had gone for a grab right there, he's not going to want to duck preemptively, considering the stage positioning with, the ba with his back to the wall and everything like that. Yeah. I think just... I guess it depends on what Oz would have wanted in order to finish out that game. Do you just go ever so slightly in the defensive route to where it's enough to kind of screw with what Enders is thinking about because he's not going to expect a change up that quickly? Or do you just take the 10 out of 10 in aggression and amp it up to like 80 out of 10 and just be like, yeah. I got hit by a 2A and it's time to grab. That's the kind of thing that if yeah. I'm in Enders position, I'm real irritated. Definitely. I can almost feel the irritation that Enders was kind of feeling in terms of just how his opponent just didn't care and kept pressing buttons. I think if Oz had been able to adapt and realize what he had forced his opponent to do, that could have been a different story um, if he was able to get that identification. Because he, had, yeah. As I mentioned before, he made Enders start respecting what he was doing. He made Enders respect that he was going to press buttons constantly. Yeah. But he didn't really do anything with that. And we saw Enders make the adaptation and be able to take the set yeah the major difference there was that in the game where oz won for the most part i feel like a lot of the big damage that he was getting was enders would try to backdash as he is wont to do um to try and create whiff punishes oz decided to go with like the longest range stuff that he has 6aa uh 6a plus b and end up catching him a lot for being uh, trying to get the optimal whiff punish with something yes. like IGDR or CE. And that's a pretty big deal, especially with 6A plus B, because you end up getting a lethal hit out of that. Yes. The second that Enders decided to just forego the big time punishment and just go for something small, the, the, the defensive game plan completely fell apart. And then I still had fantastic offensive pressure, but it simply wasn't enough. Exactly. I 100% agree with everything you just said there, but it looks like we got Incendiate versus Omega XEN. I am trying to remember the last time I've seen Incendiate play against 
Oh, now I remember. Um, in the Boom League, I was on Omega Xian's team. We ended up playing uh, a match where uh, I went all the way down to... I, I won all the matches all the way up to Incendiate, and then Incendiate brought it all the way back, played against Omega Xian in this matchup. And in this matchup, Incendiate got destroyed. Manhandled. You wasn't po you're just dealing with A6 and all the different like higher damaging options that a scrappy character like Taki can pull out was very scary to the point where Incendiate switched to Ivy. So it seems like Incendiate is feeling significantly more confident and competent in this matchup, and I'm curious to see if he's able to change what was a dominating matchup from the you know during the Boom League. And it looks like it looks like it, I was correct. He is yeah. significantly more confident in this matchup. Mm -hmm. Definitely is. NCD is a player who will lab whenever he loses to make sure he is as best as he possibly in the next time. But you're seeing that right now. All the meter that MIGXDN has right now, he has been a player that has not been using it that often. I think that this could be a great opportunity for him to try and come back in this game number one. Yeah, perhaps he's been uh, watching um, the uh, the Japanese Soul Calibur players and has decided that meter is no longer exist in Soul Calibur 6. Shots fired. Mm -hmm. But there we go. Pull the trigger on it. Gets the high damage combo and be able to come back into this round. Goes with the low. Ooh, I thought that was an actual hit because he meant chip damage. I think that's it. Yep. Yeah, that's that it. is the low life bonus with guts is going to do more than enough damage here. Yeah, he wouldn't even need it. He wouldn't needed any of those bonuses. He had enough. Uh, he had a low enough life. And doesn't it suck to try and deal with Shanghua when you are dead to a CE? Think of yeah. all the things you can't do. You can't yes. do like any lows. Like nope. none of them. You can't uh, do any lows. You can't whiff. Like, you can't whiff a grab. You can't do anything minus 12, which is a lot of things. Yeah. You're really limited on the things you can do, and you, you essentially... The eyes that Taki yeah. wants to do. I mean, everything is super risky. You have to just do mids, and that's boring. Nobody wants to do that. It's too easy to defend that. Nice 3B mm -hmm. for the punish. Yeah, Incendiate, his timing and his spacing are absolutely incredible. Whoa, 3B. Trying to get him over uh, under those highs. And Omega XDN putting in the offensive pressure right now, but the to the call of the low grab coming in from Incendiate. I wonder, I wonder how much of the conditioning that one crouch grab is going to pull off. It would play a huge factor with an amazing whoa, whoa. call. Like, <laughs> okay to the whiff punish, getting off access by the Oof. jump that Taki did. Ended up getting right, threading the needle off of the high in the mid there. Mm -hmm. Trying to go for more wall rising kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, ends up getting hit by the... Oh, okay, he's trying to Caltrops, and I guess it just wasn't working out. Both players dead to a grab. Oh, that GI is not going to get punished, but the grab is going to be enough. Okay. Yeah, nice call on that one, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> CE for... Uh, the style. Style. Yeah, statement. Mm -hmm. Nice with punish. Seems like the person who aggresses first is losing so far. It's allowing stuff like this to happen. This gets the combo into the knockdown situation. Great Oki situation, but it's so hard to get Oki against jung because she has the crybaby. <laughs> Okay, it's really important that Omega XCN doesn't get, like, wrung out in this stage position. <laughs> it would be very easy. 1A! I don't know so much. I feel like that was a mistake. Nice okay. block, though, from Omega XCN. Taking round number two in game two. So once again, the first person who aggresses has typically been the person who uh, who loses. Mm -hmm. We'll Great see that way. in the game here. Challenging nice block. that A6. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Best A plus B in the game, like we talked about before. They are going so quickly right now. Ends up catching with the 3B. Great. Okay, tried to bait out the 3GI with the 4 for A, but Omega XDN just hanging on to it, doesn't give him anything. Kind of balls that he ended up going for another GI after that A plus B. This kind of goes to show was how much conditioning is necessary to get some of these top players to actually change their game plan. Definitely a soul charge coming in from Incendiate, trying to negate that pressure that Omega XDN had. But her soul charge is not fantastic at all, mostly just to get off me. It can be really good in terms of chip damage, similar to Taki's, but we're going to kind of see... Yeah, it doesn't... Oh, uh, I think that was too late. I no. was wrong, and that's dead. That's for sure dead. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be wrong? I'm not. Hey. So spent all of his resources, but that's okay. He able to secure the round. The Soul Charge oh. forced Omega XCN to re-engage and created that opportunity to make a mistake, but speaking of mistakes, Omega XCN gets the back step into the critical edge. <laughs> wow, what a... What a re! What a statement right there! A huge amount of damage there. I appreciate the fact that, you know, as we were talking about before, uh, Mega XCN's meter usage. I really appreciate the fact that this is how he decided to use his meter. But he ends up getting hit with this uh, this post GI kind of thing. Um, so we're gonna see how that that ends up panning out. 
Still has the meter advantage. Mm -hmm. Nice low grab attempt from Incendiate, guessing correctly, but doesn't get the correct throw. Oh boy, I think Incendiate was sure that he had sidestepped it. He was wrong. Yes, he's just taking the two A's. I like that he's just taking the two A's and no, loses the round, but the Incendiate has been just taking two A on A6, so he doesn't risk getting his punish obliterated by the front flip. I definitely think that's a smart plan, but did you notice what was different about what Omega XCN's pressure was like when uh, Incendiate did not have a CE versus when he does have a CE. Yeah. I'm sure he doesn't necessarily feel all that bad about eating a CE right now, but he's not going to eat anything. Omega XCN is instead going to tie Yeah, exactly. I 100% agree, right? It changes how you want to play the game because now you, you might you take an AA or something. And that's not that bad yeah. by comparison to a 70 damage critical edge that gives some of the best Oki in the game. So it's really going to be a matter of how Omega XCN is going to be able to mitigate the kind of meter usage that uh, Incendia is going to be able to pull out. Because as long as he's able to create that kind of pressure, especially when he's in Soul Charge, he ends up winning the day. So, yes. you know, it, it, but that's difficult because obviously Incendia getting a bar is kind of inevitable, except... Okay, I was going to say, I wasn't sure if he was going to go with Ivy. He ended up going with Ivy against Omega XCN in that Boom League match that I was talking about before, and he did end up winning, but he's deciding against it this time. It, I feel with Jordan, or Incendiate, he's a player that goes off of his feeling when it comes to playing Ivy, and if he's not feeling like it's going to work and not feeling like he wants to play her, he's just going to stick with his main, which is Zhang Hua. I think that he went to the character selection because he wants to have a moment to just reflect calm himself down, and just come back in with a game plan. Yeah, so nobody who knows that kind of idea be better than I do. I love being able to just take my moment to exhale and talk through what, what's going on. And who knows what kind of epiphanies I'm going to get once I provide myself that opportunity. Exactly. Incendiate changing up his options already into this game here. Trying to try some new things to make Omega XCN just feel a little bit off. Yeah, and it's definitely working. You saw Omega XCN went from pressing constant amounts of buttons to duck, step, duck, step, duck, step. And it really seems like the cooling of what ended up happening in that match, uh, or in that in-between the matches, has really mm -hmm. affected Omega XCN to a significant extent. That AA ends up getting blown up, but yeah. uh, I'm not sure if this is enough yet. He's getting a little bit of momentum going on now. Doesn't complete the string. Mm-hmm. Ooh, but 3B, yeah, one of the best 3Bs in the game, launches that tip, it's gets the full there. combo. It's got to be the best. Yeah, definitely. Canceling and stuff like that, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the throw, <laughs> getting out the GI. Try to get out of the GI. I like that he's using those kinds of strings. Wow, Incendiate going for the uh, stupendous read of the crouch grab in that situation. I understand trying to go for a read like that. Crouch grabs aren't exactly the most risky thing in the world, and he needed something relatively big in order to uh, get back in the he did. Gooey gets the whiff punish, though. Omega XCN getting a little too overzealous for some of these options. A little bit ambitious. Fantastic duck and punish yet again. Ooh, constantly trying to chase down that backdash. Uh, Taki's backdash, not exactly stellar. Gonna have to worry about Crybaby? No. Oh, nice. Good glad. That's gonna come close to evening it up. And then you're going to have Fantastic Oki, so it's gonna be a matter of how Omega XCN is able to use his now meter, or his meter advantage. Oh no, that hit. Ooh. Oh, the mix-up situation afterwards. Incendiate is so good at flowing his offense off a hit into a mix-up situation afterwards. He makes it feel like you have to just guess. Yeah, and you remember in that exact situation that we were in before, he had gone from the mid and noticed that Omega had ended up uh, blocking it, so he just decided to mix it up one for one uh, in that situation. Wow, a bit of an ambitious A plus B, but again, I really wish that Omega XCN was spending his bar Mm -hmm. uh, he keeps having the situation. Okay, now fantastic punish. Yep, and Sadiq still has that bar of meter right now. Catches oh. out in Omega's bar, and that's going to be it. That bar of meter is going to be able to secure the round. Man, okay. oh man. These matches that Omega XCN has had in this top 16, it's like... I've, I've talked with players who have been in these situations where, like, let's say they've lost against me in a yes. situation very similar to this, and they'll think, like, what do I need to do in this game in that matchup against you to try and keep you from slaughtering me. And they imagine that what I'm going to do is provide them with a paragraph worth of information and content that they're going to have to try and 
absorb and understand when in reality that's not really small corrections can go so much longer of a way than you would expect it's very similar to golf where it's like you just ever so slightly we're not talking about a game of inches we're talking about barely a game of millimeters right we're talking about such exactly. a small correction that once you do it once you're at the end of that golf shot it goes such a long way it's such a difference that you don't necessarily have to worry about making these big changes and the thing that i'm talking about with regards to omega xcn is the meter i wish that the meter was used in a, in a different way and trying to find that line where incendiate is obviously looking for a ce for like a block punishment that's really it's really the main thing you got to think about like what your win conditions are when it comes to the competitive environment and incendiate has bar meter so any sort of whiff punish launcher or any sort of block punch when he has that i12 critical edge and you're at low enough life where you're gonna die certain options no longer come available to you especially when you haven't applied any form of pressure with a soul charge or something gives to you if omega xcn had popped a soul charge to negate an offensive situation late earlier on in that round incendiate wouldn't be in that situation as favorably as he was at the end of that game omega xcn gets uh, a whiff and uh, incendiate able to capitalize and get the round because of the critical edge yeah. so you mentioned it before that you could see how Omega was playing differently based on uh, his life and also in relation to how much meter Incendiate has. Does Incendiate have a bar of meter and is he at a low enough life to where he's going to die? All of a sudden, his options start changing. But unfortunately for him, he is not adding in that extra factor that you mentioned with using things like meter. Now, is Ta Taki's Soul Charge one of the best in the game? Uh, not overly. It's good, but it's not... Uh, the best, but it yeah. definitely oh. is a great option to negate pressure. Oh, uh, hey guys, so I push this match arena real quick. I have a couple of yeah. matches, a couple of matches left to play. Um, so yeah, I just want to bring it to you guys' attention. Exclamation point match arena in the chat. We're currently at sixteen hundred and forty-six dollars and sixty-nine cents. You can um the promo codes are already used up, guys. Um, check out the marketplace if you want an item. Any of these uh. Items you purchase, one hundred percent goes to the uh, prize pool. Uh, also, check out the uh, special sponsor quest. Donate even more free. They're just likes, retweets, follows on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Make sure you right-click the dots for that extra sponsor money, guys. Got five pages of click quests. If we get to if we get to two thousand um, dollars, shout Texas will pay an extra five hundred. So it's effectively going to be a twenty-five hundred dollar pot if we get there. We're at 1646, you know, so definitely like a bit of a stretch right now, but it's been amazing support so far today, all the way up until top eight. Big ups to the top five contributors. Shout out Texas Gaming, Sabbath Deuce, Barely Here, Big Papa Chunk, and SA Rob. I appreciate anybody that takes the time to use any of the uh, promo codes or sponsor quests. Just looking through this list here, um, last couple of contributions. Uh, we got Farpa Noodle with the uh, $10. That was uh, six minutes ago. Um, so shout out to Farpa Noodle, you know, for. Not only making the uh, stream stream um, overlay program called Stream Control, but you know just being uh, one of the OGs in FGC in general, you know, always working behind the scenes. Big shout out to him. And you see my one dollar subs there. You know, for every sub or resub, I throw in a dollar into the match arena. And you can see Kamai being a good monster and using the sponsor quest as well as pre blogs. Anyway, anyway, guys, there's tons of free and, and uh, paid options for you to donate to this tournament. I'll believe there's something for everybody and. We thank you for supporting us. And shout out to JJJ and Zubaz for so overall killing on the mic and all the production staff and TO staff. Yeah, the, the TO and production staff are absolutely amazing. Art, you as well. You always run amazing. Super awesome to be a part of. And your production has always been great, but lately with these online events, I think they've come to the next level. I mean, I in terms of everything that's been going on. It's so because they really hit that. It's because, because of, of Ian, though. It's because of how well, oh, yeah. it's because of how good Ian is and how well I work with him. Yeah, it's amazing to see how these events have come to fruition in terms of just the quality of an online event. Because for a long time, you were always kind of just seen as this side thing that people would kind of just do in between offline events, in between locals. So the fact that the production is now at this point for these events is just incredible. So thank you so much for everyone to, for doing these events possible. It kind of makes me excited for when offline events come back. It's going to be really great to have that kind of stuff again. But there are still yeah. obviously going to be down days and down weekends where we're not going to have something like that. And you don't necessarily have to worry about 
what the online competition is going to be like yeah. with regards to your own entertainment as kind of like a throwaway kind of thing. Now it's going to be of this quality. It's going to transfer over to post-COVID times, yes. which is going to be really great. And so mm -hmm. I'm very excited about the yeah. kinds of relationships that we've been able to build with the people in order to make these online competitions look significantly Happen. better. Oh yeah, and, 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 and there's also something that, that we've done with, with very minimal resources. Imagine we actually had resources, a yeah. fraction of the esports resources. Like, this is yeah. all community funded. One percent, one percent, guys. Yeah. <laughs> right. Imagine one League of Legends event yeah. worth of value was taken to yeah. the Soul Calibur community. Cool. We yeah. would all have those uh, those plushy swords from Waffle. We would yeah. all have them. Yeah, and exactly. No, it's not even you, a fraction. It's a spec farpa noodle. I see. You. It's a spec. You know, Jay. Like one Dota major is more money than all every single Evo champion has ever made and combined. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm, not, I'm depressed, but I'm not surprised. <laughs> the, yeah. the, 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 only, the only thing that's been carrying us out from the doldrums is Mancherino events. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and even then, and then even then, it's still like we're still bottom tier, guys. It's all because of you guys at home. But this, I believe, Jay is our last match of the night. Correct, I believe, let me just double check. Lolo did end up beating Rakuto off stream two to one. So it's gonna be Florida Man versus Legit as our last match. Halmaru versus Siegfried. I don't believe, so Legit I think was on the other stream playing his pools matches whilst I was on the secondary stream commentating. So this is gonna be the first time that I've seen Legit play today. Uh, so I'm curious to see how this ends up going. And I've talked to Florida Man about this. It's been a long time, but I've talked to Florida Man about this matchup. And if I remember correctly, he believes that Halmaru really doesn't do well against Siegfried at all. Uh, it can yeah. actually be a relatively tough match. Now, you play Siegfried. So, so I, I'm kind of inclined to agree with that, personally. I think that Siegfried does a great job at controlling that mid-range space that yeah. Halmaru wants to do. It also has phenomenal block punishment on like things like Warrior's Focus mix-ups. And it's kind of hard for Halmaru to deal with things like AGA and a slide. Yeah, not exactly the strongest with regards to like tech cr forward moving tech crouch kind of things. Yeah. And um, to deal with like block punishment on a handful of things, block punishment is also not really uh, how Mars game as well. Exactly. Like that's one of the key things to shut down Siegfried is just denying things like his moves that are um, unsafe on block and these stance pressure situations as well. But, yeah, Florida Man and how how Mar just effectively kind of has to eat. Now he has the damage to keep up. I don't necessarily know if he has the guard damage to keep up, but who cares yeah. about guard damage when you just uppercut and then yeah. taunt as the first round of the match? Yeah, they'd be very aggressive with these A slide Bs. You know, I think maybe trying to space out a little bit more would be a solid option to go for, but let's see how well he's doing using that phenomenal grab range from Siegfried. But these A slide Bs, you know, he's getting a little too overzealous with them. Yeah, you can kind of tell the floor man is already hard punishing it with like immediate tech up sidesteps, and that mm -hmm. uh, is potentially going to uh, kill him. But that being said, the lawnmowers have done pretty well so far. Uh, so you really yeah, need to make sure that Florida man is actually like blocking them and uh, punishing them appropriately. Yeah, you gotta. Sometimes you gotta respect the base hold day if you're trying to do a little bit too much, a little bit too early. You get a good punish if you block it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You would be at least get, like a two B into uppercut or something. Yeah. Ooh, doesn't sidestep the second hit of the Soul Charge extension off B6B. I wonder if he actually like tried and just didn't end up working out, but that Bosch GI is going to probably kill him for it. Chip damage alone is going to make it so that he, all Siegfried needs to do is breathe on him. So yeah. I think it's time for Florida Man to pull out the unblockables. He just needs to find a place to to place them. Yeah, but speaking of placing, that 6B counter hit's absolutely amazing, but he drops the combo. Doesn't get the A plus B at the end. I feel like that's like the third combo drop we've seen from Legit already, and that's the third uh, base hold A that we've seen so far. That does have life. Nice duck on the throw attempt. Ooh, Not the block. Oh, no. The now he gets. No! Oh, Florida no. Man, what are you doing? You had the round two times in a row. Legit just handed both, it to you. In both situations, I think the Rage CE would have been more than enough. Yes. It and I feel like because he missed it on the flapjack. He like flipped out when he was provided a second opportunity so soon. I wonder mm -hmm. if the jump B was supposed to be Rage CE, but that doesn't track really. So I'm not sure what the jump B was supposed to be. 3B? I don't uh, know. Not sure what he tried. Maybe he went for a 2-2B and triple tapped it by accident. Who knows? Yeah, really not sure what that was all about, but I yeah. appreciate the fact that Florida Man is taking a minute, taking a breath. I wonder if he's thinking about changing to one of his other characters. Um, mm -hmm. 
Because again, not really... I don't believe he's that big of a fan of Halmar versus Siegfried. Uh, but he could potentially go to Nightmare. He could potentially go to Huang. Wait. Legit is changing... Is legit changing his buttons? <laughs> wow. Statement. <laughs> yeah, that, that is fashion. That is... <laughs> I just, I just won, and now I'm gonna change my buttons. What a miserable jerk. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I don't know if he actually changed anything, but that was mad funny. Uh, no, he changed, I think, his bind from, like, one of them was L1 to L2, I think. Okay. Yeah. But uh, now we go with the Nightmare. Yeah, what do you think of significantly different? So Nightmare has the ability to just do an absolute ton of damage and occupy the same range that Siegfried does, but Siegfried can punish Nightmare extremely hard with things like AGA Lethal Hit. Right. Yeah, so it's definitely a matter of um, block punishment hasn't really improved, your spacing hasn't necessarily improved, but your ability to challenge in the mid-range, I think, has has proved significantly better uh, now that you have, well, effectively the same sword, except yours has an eye in it. 1A, okay, into Flapjack. Yeah. Okay, Ooh, gets the not... 6 b drops the combo on the 2A plus B, unfortunate, but still, just one hit away, but he dro just throws it all away with the 1-1-B. One, one yeah, Nightmare, though, he is extremely strong at punching your mistakes, so if you whiff, you're gonna feel it. Yeah, I think he was a little bit too intent on trying to beat the Dark Legacy, but Legit has been very good at not popping that bubble unless absolutely necessary. In fact, I don't think he's popped the bubble yet this set. The threat of Dark Legacy sometimes is better yep. than actually using the explosion. Oh, hell yeah. It's mad frustrating, and, uh... Mm. <laughs> Not dead, but gonna eat a lot of damage. Dead inside, at the very least. Yeah, gets the mix-up situation afterwards. Got a bar. Oh, man. Yeah, he teched into that reverse side hold mix-up. You usually want to stay on the ground there. He really only needs one good read, coupled with all this chip damage. Whoa! <laughs> he tries to work out, and then he... Was that, like, a 4A plus B or something like that? I don't know. He did 2A plus B. That move is not good. <laughs> oh, but he <laughs> trades on the bubble oh, explosion. What? <laughs> yeah, you I can trade. Yeah, it doesn't have the auto GI throughout as soon as it uh, is active, so you can trade with the first hit of the explosion. That's hilarious. I thought the trade happened, but then also Siegfried won still. And I guess, uh, no, that is not what happened. But hey, the uh, the walls are now fully open now, which I think is a much bigger boon for a character like Nightmare with his uh, corner carry. So he's refreshing the terror charge here as well. Ooh, gets what? blocked, but doesn't punish the <laughs> floor man dropping the combo. Punishing Flapjack to Flapjack into Bosch combos, hitting with B4, another Flapjack. Bubble Ooh. moves into Soul Attack. You're yeah. totally comfortable using Meter just to get that one additional hit as Nightmare because you're the best Meter gainer in the entire gamer. Yeah, you get a third of a bar just for hitting a 2A plus B. Boom. You thought your bubble was cool, here's my bubble. Still doesn't have a bar, but okay, Legit's gonna spend his. Still a little bit. Go. Yeah, a little bit extreme. Ends up eating quite a lot of life. It has the plus frames. Ooh, oh. goes to Critical Edge with a 2k, gonna beat it out. Nice block punch still coming. Actually, that wasn't block punch. Just hit him out of something <laughs> with the wall rising B. Yeah, um, the whole concept of uh, block punishing Flapjack doesn't really seem to exist in this matchup right now. Yeah. One bar to one bar. I feel like that is a, uh, a bigger boon for Nightmare than it is for Siegfried. Both players have to be very careful right now. They're both effectively dead to one thing, and he doesn't end up catching the ability to get away from that string. Yeah, you gotta sidestep that one if you do anything against it. Nice block. There we go. Gets the block. Oh, he drops the combo drops again. Every time. Yeah, I don't know so much about this character change. 6B, huh? Well, you end up beating a drill. Still a relatively uh, solid life lead for legit, but uh, now you're dead to one combo. All right, you might be dead to this one reversal edge. No, you don't have the range for that. Oh, fantastic yep. whiff punish with mm -hmm. the soul attack. I don't know. I feel like Florida Man can sometimes be juggling a lot of characters, and he yep. doesn't necessarily have them all in ship shape. And um, very pivotal execution, er execution errors, both as How Mario and as Nightmare. So very unfortunate yes. stuff. I, I agree with that. There's a lot of drop combos that were very crucial with his Nightmare in that last game where he could have secured rounds and even the game at one point yeah. if he had not dropped a few crucial, crucial combos. So, you know, that's something where you want to be making sure you have your execution on deck. You know, Nightmare, he does have a lot of execution-based 
things that are part of his kit. You know, AJ is a big part of it, uh, doing things like B-slide A, which we did see Florida Man drop a couple times at B-slide A out of Night Side Stance. So you got to make sure those are clean. You got to make sure those things are ready to go if you're going to be bringing out that character. Fortunately, he wasn't. And Legit, who was making some mistakes, it didn't really matter because Florida Man was not capitalizing properly. Or when he was getting the punish, he was dropping the combo. Yeah, and I think it was like three times that he ended up dropping that Nightmare combo. Yeah. And if you couple the amount of damage that Nightmares typically get him on that combo, dropping three of them, I actually did the math as we were going through the transition, and that's equivalent to 1.2 trillion points of damage <laughs> ended up getting missed. And that's a big deal. You know, even for a character that's as heavily armored as Siegfried, he's not going to have the AC or the HP to deal with that level of damage. Yeah, and if you don't think about it, and it's, even if you do think about it, they're the same person, so he's going to know where all the kinks in the armor are, so that's also yeah. going to play a factor. It's, it's is, even worse. Yeah. But uh, that is it for us today in terms of matches that we are going to be commentating. Jay, it's always a pleasure to be commentating with you. Likewise. Uh, Yes, it's a very fun time that we were able to come back and commentate with DXX Callow number two. Um, but you guys in the chat, thank you guys all so much for your support. $1,647.04 is how much we have raised on day one of this event. Don't go anywhere in terms of this weekend because we're going to have tomorrow. We're going to be back. Jay and I are going to be back doing top eight. Not together, but he'll be there and then I'll be there separately we wanted yeah. separate living situations in order to, oh i'm melting oh god oh. <laughs> okay we did our best we tried oh there you go he's back yeah refreshing <laughs> refreshing fixes I, it actually i put my face together back really quickly sorry i have a watercolor painting that's the size of my wall it started dripping all over my face i apologize <laughs> hey hey oh. everyone hey how how's it going i i hope everyone enjoyed that uh what we just saw i did i enjoyed it i enjoyed yeah. it yeah it was really it good was very fun i love and the match arena. i love the matches yep only have those minor, are two important things only have minor technical issues too yeah i i mean ca ugh, cameras over the internet are not perfect it's no, hard no. this is i think this is we're doing the best we can but i really appreciate everyone who's been uh working behind the scenes on production, working in front of the scenes on production, and also sitting there in chat, watching and donating and all of that. And uh, shout outs to everyone who participated, especially for just playing their hearts out. And uh, this, this was like one of the most ridiculous online projects, I think that I've ever tried to do. So, Shout outs to everyone who like believed in me enough to actually show up and play in this nonsense. Um, Which I, is everybody in the community. Apparently. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to come in and say thanks to everyone and tell everyone that tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, we're going to have the top eight. Uh, and I'm going to tell you who that is right now. Obviously, we were all watching most of it, um, but we have in winner's side, Sly Tiger, Zephikai, Boom, and Noo. And then in the loser's side, with a with a sad team kill, Ender's J and Incendiate, and then Lolo and Legit. So that's your top eight for Deus Ex Kylo Two, and we'll see you tomorrow at four. And have a great night, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Thanks, amazing. everyone. Yeah, that was amazing, guys. Art, I don't know what you want to do to sign off, but we are done. Yeah, I hear you. I'm just finding out, I'm just finding out who to host. I'm going to play some old footage while I figure out who to host. But yeah.